Oh, this is what it is. Wow. Yeah, no. Welcome back to Tech Truck Channel. I'm Brian. I'm Craig. And boy, we've got a doozy for you right now. This is the year of the midsize truck. Everything's getting refreshed, or at least getting special editions over here. We're gonna go through and compare everything on these two trucks. And why we picked these two is, well, one, we own this one. And then two, we've been begging for this one for a while because it looks so cool. But I think it's really interesting because this is the oldest platform on sale right now and this last year was the older platform on sale at the time which is now the newest platform the tnga f chassis from toyota so let's get into it and see if they're still relevant starting with monroney's craig okay the known commodity is the toyota uh this is ours we've talked about it before if you follow the channel you know that ours came to see the base price was 44 455 that's with an automatic transmission and destination delivery and then with all the add-on Gulf State Toyota added to it, it came out to 47,316. And that includes Predator mm, side steps mm. and cleaning packages and some stuff we just probably wouldn't expect. And that's unfortunate. Now, the Frontier, this is based on the SV Crew Cab, short wheel base, 4x4 automatic. You can only get the automatic in this. Its base price is 37 before destination. Destination would have been $1,500. But once you add on the Fender package and the hard body and the convenience package and the carpet and the tech package, it comes to 46,540 putting them very, very competitive on price. To break it down some more, if you got this one base, it's 44 with an automatic, and you get this one without everything other than the hard body package, it's 42,000. So they are very close still, a little bit cheaper in this camp. But let's hop into the noses of these things. Starting with the Frontier, you've got cool 80s style graphics on the hood, which matches the hard body package. Dimensional letters on the grill, but the newest Nissan grill with white in the emblem. And then I come down to the nose. You've got flat black plastic, which is perfectly fine for an off-road trim truck. But Craig, check out these headlights. These are nostalgic, just like the hard body package because they're halogen. They're not <laughs> LED, they're not HID. And this morning when I went to work in the dark, I went, oh man, the parking lots are on. I was wrong, it was the headlights. So I put the fog lights on, that helped a little bit, but it's still not the best option out there. The TRD Off-Road Tacoma, big handsome Toyota grill, matches the Tundra, just smaller, which is basically the entire theme of this truck. It's a new design language, we're gonna stick with it. Flat black plastic, because it's not for a truck, a little rattly. Seems to be a theme with this truck. We've had some rattles going on with random things. LED headlights, which are very good. They don't trace with your steering, but they are very bright at night. I'm sorry, we do have incandescent turn signals, but LED fog lights as well, happy with that. All right, starting with the wheels. This is where I think the Nissan's gonna kick some butt because these wheels are so freaking cool. Radwood called, they want their wheels back. Turns out Nissan took them, they're gonna sell them to you for $4,000. Are not the same wheel that came in the 90s and 80s with the Pathfinder and Frontier hard body of the day, but they are exactly the same design. They are aluminum, which is really cool with the modern uh, Nissan logo in the center. Wrapped around them are Hankook Dynapro AT2s, 265 70 17s. Treadwear is about 520. They'll last a long time. They'll handle some dirt, but these are not a proper full on all terrain or a hybrid rugged terrain tire we see today. I'd call it a mild all terrain. Very mild all terrain, but you know, if you're serious about off roading, you're changing that. Anyways, wrapped around it is a flat black, black fender liner, which is good. I'm glad it's not painted. If you have pinstriping going on, this will help you a little bit. Pretty sturdy mud flap right there. Come on down to the Tacoma, we have a thicker, bigger fender flare with an arrow treatment right here. You're, you can actually fit your hand through there. Maybe it's one tunnel design, I don't think so. But it's still a cast aluminum wheel, but it's a TRD off-road specific wheel with a red center cap, which also looks really good. Not a retro vibe, but a proper modern wheel. Machine lip and wrap around it is a tire I prefer a little bit more, the BFG Trail Train TA, same size, 265 70 17. And look, this is not a KO2, but we've been surprised at its grip. Not a mud tire, but probably more bite in the dirt. All right, coming on down the side, you get sweet 4x4 graphics. And look at this, Craig. What is what? that? That's a real rock rail. Very happy with that. There are no goofy hoops on it. But what I do notice is similar to Tacoma, there's a big coating under the paint on the bottom. Looks very orange peel, and that's for, it helps protect against like rock chips and stuff like that and rust prevention. Not the best look, but there's a function to that. We'll take it. Hopping on down to Tacoma Town. We have no steps at all because we took them off. It came with Predator steps that we had to buy with the truck that were $700, but the hoops were so low and the steps were not removable from the actual rail part that we're just gonna ditch those and go with an aftermarket solution. More on that coming later. We don't have cool graphics, but we do have dimensional letters, which I think look quite handsome. Come on down to the back. You've got a bed rack on both of these trucks, so we'll talk about that. This is what used to be an optional bed rack through Nismo, directly to Frontiers, but it comes standard on the hard body. Really cool 80s style with this double kind of bull bar hoop and Frontier uh, pierce cutting. All it's missing is some giant yellow KC headlight. Yes. Colors. That's what it needs, <laughs> and it does have pots where you can do that. Hopping down to the fuel door. Is she capitalist? Do you know? No. Oh, man, mm. fail. 
fail. Does have a, a hook, but who cares? It needs to be capless. Yeah, no one cares. No one cares. Come on to the back. We do have LED tail lights, which look really good. I was following Craig over here. That's a nice touch. And the graphics package continues across the rear. Embossed the letters and the tailgate. Really happy with that. This bumper looks plastic, but there's metal behind it, which is a nice touch. In the middle, you do have a proper four-way flat and a seven-way harness. Two-inch receiver from the factory, good to tow up to 6,600 pounds, give or take, depending on spec and four-wheel drive and all that stuff. But more importantly, I think it's time we hear what this exhaust sounds like because there's no turbo involved. Oh man, that is so refreshing in today's market. The last man standing for natural aspiration. One more thing before we go to Tacoma, backup sensors, something that Tacoma does not have. Come on down to Tacoma Town. We have added a bed rack to ours. This is from Cali Rays, and we have not put our tent on yet. It arrived today. We're going to put that on the next episode, I'm sure. It's pretty cool and looks so much better, even with nothing on it, but not an it's option. On it. We, oh, yeah, we've got a jerry can. Fuel range isn't that great on this, so we have that. And then we zip tied some zip ties because that's how you really help yourself off road. Coming down to the fuel door, plastic, not uh. capless. Yada, yada, but a better holder for the cap. Okay. Credit on that. Down out rear, there are no leaf springs like the Frontier. Ooh. There's a multi-link suspension in the rear. We like that a lot. And some Bilstein dampers with external reservoirs. A little bit more off-road cred in the rear end for sure. Coming on back, we do have a bedside flag, which the Frontier does not have, although it has a 4x4 on the door that might pass for it. Something to think about. We have not only dimensional letters, they are inset. So they have stacked their, their gimmicks on here. We also have our backup camera on the handle, but no backup sensors. In addition to that, we have a high lift jack on both sides that is frame mounted. You can lift the entire truck with that. Two inch receiver in the middle, four way flat and seven way plug right here. Well, just because it's powerful doesn't mean it doesn't sound like a sewing machine. Let's check it out up front. Uh, boys and girls, let's, let's talk about power. This thing has a 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6. This might as well be a small block Chevy in the world of trucks in the midsize today. <laughs> it's not a VQ40, but it's a VQ, is it 38? 38. Yeah, um, still variable valve timing. It's basically the same architecture, but updated. Good for 310 horsepower, 281 foot pounds of torque, and the sweet sounds of valves, not turbos. Hopping over to Tacoma, it is a turbo 2.4 liter, and Craig says it all the time. T42A-FTS, get used to it. This is gonna replace all the old 3.5 V6 applications, and it makes similar shove, but a lot more torque. Good for 278 horsepower paired to the automatic, 317 foot pounds of torque. It gets the job done paired to an 8-speed automatic versus 9-speed automatic source from Mercedes over here. All right, Brian, let's check out the bed and the interior of the Frontier and compare it to the Tacoma. Brian, before we do anything else, let's check out the locking tailgate, see if that does that. Oh, wow. 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 And yes, it does lock. It is very loud. It sounds like Fort Knox to shut the gates. I mean, <laughs> I like, it. it's to unlock it. Oh, well, great. And it damn is. Okay, it, it I wasn't is. sure All for right. Our, this one opens right away. It's not, it does not too stiff from the spray and bed liner. This yep. one does come with a spray and bed liner. Brian, I'm just going to say, I like this application of the spray and bed liner better then we have on the Tacoma, it seems to be a little bit better finish, in my opinion. It's Interesting. Not, um, okay. Now, this is a steel bed versus a composite bed, so that is one thing, and it's very interesting. Brian, one thing, Nissan's always done really well. Fair These enough. little side rails are very yeah. nice and beefy, and man, you can, this, this is pretty cool. I like yeah. you can put that anywhere. Yeah, the extrusions everywhere. You can tie down anywhere. You don't have any tie downs, interestingly enough, down low up front or anywhere on the side. There is no tie down Ooh, up here. Good point. Now. One of the problems we get with this is I can't just slide it all the way forward. I could take it all the way off, remount it, slide it in. Right. Kind of annoying. I would almost have to buy more of these to get a tie down up front or True. just leave them up front. You do get a tie down in the back up in the mid level. I do like that better than down at the bottom. We'll look at the Tacoma here in a minute. And then over here, we get some sort of little thing that says you have 400 watts. That's not bad. You can do you can charge a laptop with that. A little bit with that. So yeah, that's something. Make coffee, but up okay. here, Brian, you bed lighting light. back here, bed lights in the bed and up here. And then your third tail light is blocked by this thing, so you get a little LED here, but halogen up here. Hmm. Do they both work? They both work, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right, to the Tacoma. Let's see, back to back, locking tailgate. Yeah, uh, but it doesn't make any noise. A lot, a lot quieter, for sure. Some would say that more refined. Some would say mm. less aggressive. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. Dampen, just like the Frontier, which is very nice. Yep. We get the spray and bed liner over here. Like we say, it's a little bit more overspray than the yeah. Frontier, but who knows? It's a first generation, and it's fine. I, I don't know. I think you're kind of... 
off base. I think it's fine. I don't think there's a problem with this one. We do get a composite bed. You can kind of see a little hints of it there. And if you look underneath the truck, you would see it as well. Get on into the back, Brian. We've got this thing in the way. Now I've got to climb over it. Okay. But very nice from Kelly Ray's. This is very sturdy, actually. Yeah, actually, very strong. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested in one of these, we got a link in the description below. 5% off. Run, you do get bed lights in the middle, just like in the front here and up here. We do have a factory LED installed light, though. That is nice. So if we ever got the bull bar like the Frontier has, we would have LED and LED. Oh, that's instead right. Instead of halogen right. LED. Right. Yeah. Um, tie downs, we only have tie downs. Well, I'm sorry, only. We do get tie downs up front up here, which is very nice. And just like the Frontier, we get a rail up front and on the sides. We don't have the nice little twisty little tie down oh, accessories. We, we had those. In the, we've never used them. They're in the back of the truck. Oh, we do have them. Brian's never installed them, so uh, sorry we, about that. Look, look, little inside baseball. We don't move into our cars we buy. <laughs> we still have, look at the, show them the key. We still have the dealer uh, key tag from just fleet management. So what happens. that means is if you ever buy one of our vehicles, you're getting it pretty fresh. I mean, we, <laughs> you still get this. Yeah. It's just like the hat and keeping the stickers on. So tie downs down here are in the bed. Ooh. Wish they were somewhere else. Brian, in our particular trim, other Tacomas, you can get different things. We don't have any accessory ports or plug-ins. Right. So, you know, a little bit, you but know, we had the we had the bed liner, which Toyota says is not available in 2024 yet. Allegedly. So allegedly. And I'll say this about the bed liner in the Tacoma. It makes it quiet. It does. Also, show more modification. We had to modify the, the, the bed we bracket. Oh, yes. Oh, we have modified this. This modification is so when you close the tailgate, it doesn't rattle when you open and shut the door. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very nice. We had to do that. Let's move on to the interior. All right. Moving on to the rear of the uh, Frontier, Brian. The door opens quite enough, I'd say. Yeah. It's a small door. You do get a... Non-padded door sill, you do get a padded door rest, and the door pull, it does not go through, so you can actually drop something, a phone in there or something like that. And a nice big water bottle spot, very handy and very convenient. Let's get onto the actual seat. Let's see it. storage underneath. Oh, nothing that's on my side, because I've got a subwoofer. Got a little bit on your well, side in here. That's not bad. Not bad. Also, Brian, split seat. Yes, and that's very key, Brian, because when you have a car seat in here, Brian, you want to get underneath that seat still and without moving this? But yeah, look at that. Th look, you can leave the car seat here and still get underneath. That's nice. That's very nice, Brian. But we do have a problem we need to point out, and that is, Brian, do you see how upright this is? Uh, yeah, it looks like a 90. Today. It's very upright. I'm going to show you. I'm going to sit in it real quick. And I'm not, I, I, it's, it's very uncomfortable. So uncomfortable that I wouldn't want to make anyone ride back here. Let's show you how bad it really is. See? So you can see the angle. It says this is what most car yeah, cars should be an angle at. Yeah. You can see, um, what, can you, you see my hand? Yeah, I can see your hand. Yeah, yeah. That, that shows you how, well, and the trade-off now is, look how close he is to the seat. Because right, so now he has a little, because yeah. he can't go back like it should. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna say this, that's a fail. Hmm. Now, Brian, let's see if you fit though, because that's important, okay. and we I'm do get, ooh, that's, well, that's, that's pretty nice, nice, nice cup that. holders, and look, split rear window, very nice, um, pretty convenient, no rear AC. Ooh. But you do get an armrest and split seats. That's, see, these are big pluses. Those are big pluses. USB-C, USB-A. Um, but Brian, do you fit? I don't know. I can't remember. I haven't been in this truck in a long time. It is vertical. I fit like a charm though. But my knees are in my in my chest. That's the problem is the seat's so low. I'll take this though because my head's not hitting the roof. Pass. More room than the Tacoma. For sure. Let's go. More comfortable. No. All right, Brian, on to the Tacoma. Let's see how it compares to the Frontier. We get a... Well, same thing like Frontier. We get a non-padded door sill. We get a non-padded armrest. That's a bummer. You do get a spot to put your cell phone. That is convenient. And you do actually get plenty of room for water bottles on there. All right, Brian, moving to the actual seat itself. You can see there's an actual angle. But before we get to that, let's check storage. Oh, it Wait. looked like it was one piece there, but it's actually split. Wait a second. That's nice. It's just on the opposite side. I'm okay with that. That's good. Speaking of that angle, though, Brian. It actually pitches back because the headrest is just pushing you down. Pitches back definitely more than the... Yeah, that's, there we go. But one, there you so go. So now, it. look. Now I can actually fit my hand through there. Yeah. Um, goes to show you how much better of an angle it is. And what I mean by better angle is, you know, one designed for humans. Okay, so let's get in here. Um, one of the complaints about the Tacoma for my kids is you can't get your feet underneath the seat. I got that problem a little bit, but... We both like to drive with our seat all the way down, That's so true. there's yeah. that. Brian, no rear AC back here either. Bop, no USB-C or A. Oh, wow. Just the old school. Very interesting. But you do get the cup holders up here. I like that a lot. Center, no center nope, no armrest either, nope. Brian. Let's see if you fit. Okay, I'm sitting behind what would be probably my wife on the side. Uh, look, there is a cutout. I'm not hitting my head, but I'm brushing my hair. But the back of the seat is way more contoured and more comfortable. Look, here's the thing. This has less room than the Frontier. There's no denying it. This is smaller back here. Yeah. But this is more comfortable. I think it's because the seats are just bigger. The seats themselves are bigger and more padding. The seat padding, the, the, the seat's longer, so I've got actually room for my leg to rest on. And it's not at a weird angle. I could, I'm way more comfortable out here. Yeah, same. Me too. 
to the front. <laughs> Moving on to the front, the frontier, Brian, let's start with the door and the sill itself is hard plastic. Don't like that. Some would say cheap okay okay That's moving rude. on to the rest of the door we have a padded door rest that is nice the door pull is does not go through so you can actually put a cell phone in there positive and then brown we wait, get wait, a wait, nice there's carbon fiber aid. yeah yeah that's definitely carbon fiber for sure okay. that's not cheap okay so, <laughs> so brian these are the window switches normally i would never show you a window switch but the reason i'm showing you the window switch over here brian is because what year is it uh 2024 right 2024 but we still have yeah. 2000 or 1999 auto up and down on the driver only, nothing on it, anything else. That is unbelievable. It's the actual, exact same switch gear we've had for Since decades, at least basically. 2007. Um, kind of goes to show you that this is a refresh, not a completely redesign. Ron, these buttons are handy. They're in good spots. We get downhill descent control, blank spots for fog lights and that sort of thing. We turn off all the safety 360, trash control. Way down here, these don't look like they're in a bad spot. But Brian, when I get in here, here's what happens is Dang. I'm driving. You can't see them. I can't. I, they're, they're way down here. Like this is way down by my shin. That's my shin. So uh, that's interesting and uh, something to think about. Let's just get into the rest of the interior. The rest of the interior, Brian, is not bad. I would yeah. actually say it's a good refresh. I like the styling of it a lot. I love that I immediately get in and despite having an actual key. Right. It's actually so push, push to start. start. So okay. interesting. Yeah. Uh, Brian, you see this switch here? That's uh -huh. the same switch they've had since... I don't know, a long time. At least 07. A long no. time. We get, we don't get a rear locker here. We do get that in the Tacoma. We'll go over that in a minute. We get USB-C, USB-A, that's nice. No Qi charging here or nope, not there enough. in this, because this is an SV, not the completely loaded one. But Brian, look at this. Volume, tuning, two knobs. Yep. Very simple. Works. I get in here, I turn it on, I tune the station I want, I listen. Very convenient. You do, do get dual zone climate control and this particular patch because, it's, because we get the convenience package and we get the old school charger right there, which is nice. Well, plenty of room for... Our Tacoma doesn't have that. Yeah, Tacoma doesn't have that. Mm, so, uh, Brian, let's get over here to the actual gauges and start this bad boy up. Hit that start button and... Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh. See cool that sweet. gauge? Swoop? Yes. We actually get analog gauges that actually work in... The graphics... Yeah. Are, the graphics on that digital cluster is really good. It looks yeah. real dimensional. <laughs> very good very good <laughs> now you can't change the modes i can't make this go to the center like a can of the tacoma but that's yeah. because it's real that looks like it came from circuit city that's all i'm going to say circuit city graphics wise if you ever remember circuit city let us know in the comments i don't know if any of y'all remember that but um i barely remember it okay um moving on to the actual infotainment itself run uh it anything works. that's nissan designed don't use it just use carplay oh okay there's that to it the tacoma. it works though it works all right Brian, moving on to the tacoma interior before i forget i want to mention payload payload mm. For the Frontier is 1,090 pounds, which is interesting. Really thought it would be higher because it's not the most loaded option. Usually, the more options you put, the less payload you get. Tacoma, one of the knocks on the previous generation was payload. It was really bad. It was always 1,000 or less, 900, 800. This one's 1,200. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not yeah. bad. They've actually listened to the Overland community, and they're responding. Moving on to the door, Brian. We get a nice non-padded door sill. That theme continues. Some would say cheap. Moving on to the uh, door rest. It's padded, which is nice. And Brian, yeah, it, it does go through, but there's a big thing, storage cubby to hold whatever you put in there in a molly panel, it's, strap it down. It's or like hook a water it. slide. I like it. Yeah. And you see these switches? Those are new. <laughs> I mean, Those are new. new. <laughs> <laughs> what they are is, they don't even say it on here, that they don't even have to well, brag wait, about wait, it. Wait, but, but hold on. They'll be that way for 20 years. It, well, that's true. But they don't even have to brag about the auto up and down because they all do it. Yep, Thank you. That's nice. We do get nice water bottle holders down here. Look, this is a well-designed door. Everything works. Yep. Let's move on to the actual interior. The plenty, say, look, same style. We have plenty of buttons and switches over here. Plenty of room to add some. We've already added some right there. It's a nice uh, Cali Rays LED lights. If you want some of those, 5% off. Link in the bill. But, Brian, they're not as low. Like, this is the lowest button, and it's to my knee. It's not by my shin. Yeah, when you're driving, like, you, can, and that's, you can use them easily. And that's a factor. Brian, let's uh, start this battle up and see what we get. We get a nice red start button. No key. And we start it up, and the... Uh, we get the fake analog gauge sweep. So this is a throwback to what we used to have over there. Right. Um, you know what? These work, though, actually. And you can actually toggle it where this goes in the center. Yeah, they're You get all the information you work. Nice. It works. It's fine. Moving on to the actual Toyota infotainment, Brian. Um, this is where it kind of just wins. Yeah. If you use anything that's actually Toyota designed in here, whether it's the radio or anything like that, it works. And it's actually usable. If for some reason CarPlay is hiccuping on you, this one will do. Sometimes. And you can just use a Toyota infotainment and it works. That's nice. You do only get a volume knob and it's like it from an aftermarket, you know, radio, kind of small. Feels cheap. Well, that part feels cheap. Okay. And also, <laughs> this right here. Yeah. Oh, it's not a hot day right now. But in the afternoon, if you rest your hand to hit a button on the screen, oh. this creaks. And that's the only cheap part in the interior, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. No tuning knobs. So, you know, a little bit of a downfall there. 
but they make up for it with a big HVAC knob. If size matters, they got you covered there. <laughs> no wireless Qi charging in our particular trim, but plenty of room for cell phones and that sort of thing. You can just kind of tell it's a little more modern design for cell yeah. phones to be upright so you can easily access them. And then, Brian, we get all the off-road goodies here. And because we got the TRD off-road, we get the rear That's locker. kind of nice. kind of wish the nice. Frontier had that. But, you know, there's Tacomas that don't have it either. Enough of all that, though, Brian. Let's see what the zero to 60 times are. Really? All right, Brian, the 90s are back and the 2000s never went away. I'm okay with that. on hard body. <laughs> oh, wow, that's complimentary. Time to hit it. What modes we got? I've got it in four-wheel high to see what can happen there. And there's no Tra modes. And there's no modes. That's it. Ready? Hit it. Load it. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. Makes a great noise. It does. Not the fastest. No. Nope. 60. Nope. What you got? What you got? What you got? Triple eights. Triple eights. Triple eights. Okay, look, that's not great. With me, with me in the car and the four high launch, you know, we don't know if that's even the fast. We're just trying there. Yeah, so uh, um, look, I did my normal testing, um, and 8.06 is the best I could pull out of it. Huh? 8.06. Look, that's just what it is. Wow. And I don't wow. know what to okay. say all right. other than. Sorry the, for all the VQ fans. I know, but it sounds awesome. And it the does sound great. The is really good. Actually, in all seriousness, I blame the non Nissan part of this, the Mercedes part of this. What? I think that transmission is a little slow. Oh, it's slow to react. Yeah. And I think the real issue is the final drive combined with the yes. first gear ratio on yes. this. If you've got nine gears, make first gear granny. Yeah, come on. And Lord only God. use it in sport and off-road. Start in second gear the rest of the time. And again, like Ford does with sport mode actually means something. Yeah, there is no mode here. There's no mode here, right. which is simple, but not helping it zero to 60 times. It's not reactive. That's, yeah. all, that's all I'm saying. All okay, right. Brian, we got to get on to just the ride and drive part, though. Right. Um, and ergonomics of seating in this nah, and all that fine, and right. stuff. What do you think? I'm comparing this direct to Tacoma. Yep. But Tacoma is brand spanking new. No, nope. This is not. And what I mean by that mostly is the Xterra and Frontier ever since, what, 04, 05, 06, whenever they came out, there's no travel on the rear. Yeah. And I've found the bump stop twice today in normal yeah. driving. Yeah. That's a little frustrating. And I also feel like this thing needs to be taller for an off-road themed truck. And the steering is super duper heavy in parking lots because it's a hydraulic rack with a really quick ratio to make it feel like an e Wait, I thought we always wanted a hydraulic rack. No, 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 we do. But they've combined it with a super active or uh, tight steering ratio and the pump speed is too slow yeah. to compensate for that. So it's really heavy. Really heavy. Yeah. That's basically it. Ride and drive though, go. it's fine. Oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. I will say though, I didn't realize how much the coil suspension helps. In Tacoma? In yeah. Tacoma until yeah. I got in this with leaf springs and you're like, oh, good point. Oh, it, well, does, well, it does actually help. One actually really big thing I want to point out. This is quieter on the highway than the Tacoma is. That's a good point. This is quiet. It's very, very quiet. Notice that a lot today. One more thing about riding drive, Craig. Yeah. There is not lane keep, but there's lane departure warning. Yes. And I've got a video clip. But listen to this. Is that ABS? No, 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 no. That's a physical vibrator in the steering wheel. Oh. And okay. it rattles like an 80s child's toy. Again, throwback. Throwback, hard body, baby. I love the charm. All that covered taco time. Two to go. All right, Brian, uh, we're in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. You hear that sound? That sounds like a tractor. That's direct injection. That's what they do now. Okay, hit it. Sport mode, traction mode. Okay. Off. Good surge initially. This is peaking at, looks like, oh, there goes a 14. Okay, there we go. Okay. And okay. 60 miles an hour. All right. 8.78. With you in it? With me in it. Almost the exact same as the Frontier. Frontier was 8.88. That's imp that's concerning, actually, because I'm watching the boost gauge while we're driving, uh -huh. and it usually rips to 15 PSI like that, and then runs out to RPM. It was hanging out at 7.5 and, and peaking around 10. Hmm. Not sure what's going on there. And this is part of the Toyota and, P and turbos. It is. And look, we did some dyno testing with this and mm -hmm. haven't given you guys numbers because of that stuff happening the whole time on the dyno. Yeah. More on that later. Without you in the car, yeah, we'll 7.74 7. to 60. Okay, so you but you beat eight seconds. I buy a lot, yeah. But, uh, so a quarter good second. amount. Um, yeah. yeah, and the Nissan couldn't even crack it. 8.08. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's that. Okay, so that settles the debate though. Yeah. Uh, Turbo, bigger turbo. bore v6 not naturally aspirated or smaller displacement turbo four cylinder this is faster because mm -hmm. now a lot of Toyota people are upset what's the four cylinder? It's four cylinder. right it's faster it's, it's faster. faster i'm sorry yeah. now here's the caveat the ranger is still faster than this mm. because of, of tuning let's be honest sure toyota wants it to last forever and ford wants it to be the best and it probably Before will me. and that and that's just that's that's on brand that's okay yeah, yeah. something else i want to mention ride and drive wise this suspension design is obviously brand new 
Mm -hmm. And the shocks are way better. Mm -hmm. And it just has shock travel. And this is the off-road package, travel. though. That's a little un little a little unfair. Okay, because we're not, not doing pro for us though off-road. Okay, fair. We'll save that out. But let's let's start with steering though. E-pass. It weights up right. It does give you some communication, not a ton, but it's way better in parking lots. Mm. I don't have to make micro corrections the whole time I'm driving it like the frontier. The, this has the safety sense 3.0 and the lane centering works. Yeah, very yes. well, by the yeah. way. That's good. Which point. is standard. Um and Brian, but let's get to the ride and drive though. Yes, it's not the same shock or package comparison. But Brian, there's a big difference with that. There is, we do need to compare and talk about what is that? The link suspension in the rear of the coil? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That pays dividends here. It does. It really does. It, yeah. And it feels like a much lighter Tundra, which is <laughs> what it is. <laughs> so that makes sense. It rides really well. It has a ton of motion in the rear, but it rarely finds a bump stop. We have found it a few times, but it's pretty rare that it happens. I feel like this at speed on dirt is going to be much more confidence inspiring. Fair enough. And then last but not least, Brian, not necessarily noise in here. It's quiet in here. Yeah, but you get you notice wind noise on the highway more so than the frontier. I think that's what all really is. Interesting. Yeah. One more point I want to make about the transmission. Eight speed in mm -hmm. this versus the nine speed in the Nissan. Mm -hmm. The gearing feels more aggressive in this. It does. Out of the hole, at mm -hmm. least. Mm -hmm. We are having some shifting issues here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to re reveal that here because we're talking more on that to come. This isn't performing exactly like it always has since we bought it. So all that covered. I think that's all there is to say. That's it. Uh, let us know which one you like better. We like both of them for different reasons. Depends yep. on what you're wanting to do and why you want that vehicle. Both good picks. This one's definitely newer. newer yeah. Uh, but the looks, man, they kill on the Frontier. That Frontier is so cool. Yeah. It is so cool. I, it's, I can't fault anyone for doing either one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. See ya.